A very good morning to all of you children. Today we are going to discuss about clinical biochemistry of cardiovascular diseases. Already you would have learned about the structure, functions and many diseases associated with the cardiovascular system. Today we are going to discuss how chemical compounds in our biological fluids, especially the chemical compounds in our plasma can be used in diagnosis, then to monitor the outcome of treatment and to predict the risk of developing cardiovascular diseases, especially myocardial infarction and atherosclerosis. First of all, let's see how clinical biochemistry can be used to diagnose and monitor myocardial infarction. Do you know what a myocardial infarction is? It's the death of heart muscles due to reduction or complete cessation of blood flow to heart muscles. So what are the blood vessels supplying these heart muscles? These are coronary arteries. As you can see here, these coronary arteries are very tiny. Therefore, they can be easily blocked with blood clots or cholesterol plaques. When these blood vessels are blocked, what will happen to the blood supply beyond this point? The blood supply will be either reduced or completely stopped. When the blood supply is stopped, what will happen to the supply of oxygen and supply of nutrients? Those also will be reduced. And as a result, the heart muscle cells beyond this point will die. When the heart muscles die, the intracellular proteins and enzymes in these muscle cells will leak out and enter into the bloodstream. In clinical biochemistry, what we do is, we take a sample of blood from these patients, separate plasma, and analyze it for these proteins and enzymes. It will help us to diagnose myocardial infarction and also monitor the outcome of myocardial infarction once the treatment is started. Usually people with myocardial infarction will develop very severe chest pain which is called angina. And the routine diagnostic test for myocardial infarction is electrocardiography. In electrocardiograms, we can see development of pathological Q waves and elevation or depression of ST segments. We can complement this ECG findings using clinical biochemistry. And there are certain other instances where we will not be able to see ECG changes in MI patients. But in such situations also, we can see abnormalities in clinical biochemistry reports. Now let's have a look at the biomarkers of myocardial infarction which can be detected in a sample of plasma. They are myoglobin, creatine kinase, MB isoenzyme, then the cardiac troponin I and cardiac troponin T, creatine kinase, that's the total amount of enzyme, and then lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. Out of them, the most important ones are the troponin I and troponin T proteins and 
the creatine kinase MB isoenzyme. When you look at this graph, the x-axis of this graph indicates the days after the myocardial infarction and the y-axis indicates the cardiac marker concentration and the units are ULRR. Do you know what this ULRR stands for? It stands for the upper limit of the reference range. So as you can see here, the cardiac troponin I and troponin T proteins reaches about 90 times the upper limit of reference range within 24 hours. And the CKMB isoenzyme reaches about 40 times the upper limit of reference range within 24 hours. Therefore, we can quickly diagnose myocardial infarction by analyzing these proteins or this enzyme. Sometimes it will take more than 24 hours to detect changes in the ECG. Therefore, Analysis of these biomarkers will be an advantage in certain cases of myocardial infarction. Another advantage of analyzing these troponin I and troponin T is that they will remain elevated in blood for a long period of time. That's more than one week. Therefore, we can diagnose even late presentations by analyzing these two biomarkers. Now let's have a look at creatine kinase, one of the very important biomarkers in myocardial infarction. This creatine kinase enzyme can catalyze conversion of creatine into phosphocreatine. Do you know the function of phosphocreatine? This phosphocreatine can store high energy phosphate groups acquired from ATP. And during muscle contraction, these high energy phosphate groups can very quickly provide energy for contracting muscles and this process is quicker than release of energy from ATP. In our body, this creatine kinase enzyme is found in three forms and we call them the isoenzymes. Do you know what isoenzymes are? Isoenzymes are the enzymes with the same catalytic reaction but different in their structure. So for creatine kinase, there are three types of isoenzymes. CKMM is usually found in skeletal muscles and heart muscles. CKMB is found only in the heart muscle. And CKBB is found in the brain and also in the GI tract. Out of these isoenzymes, we have to use only CKMB isoenzyme in diagnosis of myocardial infarction. That's because it's the enzyme that is specific for the heart muscle. Now let's have a look at the other important biomarker of myocardial infarction. That is cardiac troponins. We use two types of cardiac troponins in diagnosis of MI. They are cardiac troponin T and cardiac troponin I. Generally, these troponin proteins, troponin I, troponin C and troponin T are found in all types of muscle cells. But there are different isoforms in cardiac muscles.
especially troponin I and troponin T have cardiac muscle specific isoforms. That is why we can use them in diagnosis of myocardial infarction. If you consider about troponin C, it is not specific for the heart muscle. Therefore, we can't use it in diagnosis of cardiac muscle damage. By the way, do you know the function of troponin in our muscle cells? It's responsible for calcium mediated linking of actin and myosin during muscle contraction. Now let's see how we can use clinical biochemistry to predict the risk of developing atherosclerosis. So what is atherosclerosis? It is thickening of the arterial walls due to deposition of calcium or lipids. At present, one of the major reasons for thickening of these arterial walls is deposition of cholesterol. Sometimes these atheromas will grow and eventually block the blood vessel. Sometimes the rough surface of these atheromas will induce thrombus formation and ultimately the thrombus will block the blood vessel. And the turbulent blood flow in these narrowed blood vessels will break down these atheromas or thrombus and small pieces of these atheromas and thrombus can go and occlude the small blood vessels in the brain and the heart causing stroke and myocardial infarctions. So what is the major component of these atheromas? That is cholesterol. So which form of cholesterol is deposited in these atheromas? Is it the cholesterol in HDL or is it the cholesterol in LDL? It is mainly the cholesterol in low density lipoproteins. Then how can we detect if somebody is at a high risk for developing atheromas? We can check the risk by measuring the blood cholesterol level. To measure the blood cholesterol level, we generally take a lipid profile of our serum in the clinical biochemistry laboratory. In the lipid profile, we check the total cholesterol level in blood and then the cholesterol level in the high density lipoproteins and also the cholesterol level in the low density lipoproteins and the concentration of triglycerides. If somebody is having a lipid profile like this, it is desirable. That means he is not having any risk of developing atherosclerosis. But if somebody is having a lipid profile like this, he is in the borderline. That means he may or he may not develop atherosclerosis. But if somebody is having a lipid profile like this, he is having a high risk for developing atherosclerosis. So what should we do? We must advise this person to take cholesterol lowering drugs and take dietary precautions and also to engage in lot of exercises and get his blood cholesterol level to the desirable level and thereby we can prevent development of atherosclerosis in this individual. 
and this is the advantage of using clinical biochemistry to predict the risk of developing cardiovascular diseases. Well, once you start your clinicals, your patients will bring you a lot of clinical biochemistry reports. So you have to go through them carefully and do a risk assessment of cardiovascular diseases before you start your treatment. So understand this lesson well and use it effectively when you go to the clinics.